Kia ora te whanau. We're right now, we're at Smales Beach with Jim. And Jim is from Te Papa Atifai, Department of Conservation. Beautiful location and actually just up there is a male pakake, sea lion, sunning himself on the beach. Having a little moi on the beach, Jim. <laughs> we heard the great story about Mum, that first female breeding on the shores of Aotearoa for a long, long time. And, and how has that population, since those days back from 1993, how has that population grown? Yes, well, um, Mum had four daughters that went on to breed. And um, it's really interesting looking at those family lines through the different daughters. Uh, we, we tag all the pups born here, so we, we do know the family tree. And uh, f because of that, we know that this season coming up, we have 34 potential breeding females. Right. That doesn't mean that we're going to get 34 pups uh, because some of the females will skip a year. Uh, they might not start breeding at four years age, uh, but most of them do. Uh, last year we had about 28 potential breeding females and from that we had 21 pups. So we, we track mum's family really closely. Those pups being born uh, at Christmas time, uh, pretty much from, from 20th of December through to the 20th of January, we'll get uh, maybe 25 pups born. They'll be on beaches from Warrington, in the north through to Ocean View in the south, which are all pretty much city beaches that Dunedin uh, folk go to for their holidays. And you were saying earlier that the pups will be with their mum and not sure where dad is, but uh, uh, they'll be in the bush sort of thing and then they start to come out. It must be quite cute to, to see those pups on the beach. Yeah, yeah, look, the, the dads don't invest much into the pups at all, actually. Um, in fact, the females uh, are very strategic and find really good hideaway places away from the coast to have their pups because they really don't want to be bothered by the, the males. Um, and, and so those pups are hidden, you know, maybe a little bit in land up to a kilometre in land sometimes, wow. uh, which, which, which can put them up against car parks and mm. roads and, um, and into all sorts of danger. Uh, but yeah, they, they get, the mothers nest down and when the pups are about three or four weeks old, they start bringing them down to the coast, teaching them to swim, uh, yeah, just uh, getting them ready for, for, for leaving uh, their birthplace and they'll, they'll progress from here to another um, inlet out on the peninsula where the, the mothers congregate, they're very social, uh, they leave the pups together to play in a, a, in a swimming pool uh, and uh, then they'll head out to sea to forage but um, leave the pups to play during the day. So it's amazing you've got all that information. Does that, does that come from the tagging system? Yes, yes. So um, we can connect them uh, with a little flipper tag. It's, it's got a number on it that um, is unique and uh, we connect that with who the mother is and then eventually the, the, the pups will actually uh, be given a name by the New Zealand Sea Lion Trust and, nice. and local Runaka. Uh, we, d we do have microchips as well as the flipper tags. So eventually, because of the rough and tumble nature of those um, animals, uh, uh, the, the tags, the flipper tags might pull out. Yeah, sure. But they do also have a microchip that we can um, identify who they are later on. And because of the rough and tumble, and um, yeah, they'll eventually end up with uh, scars and various injuries that also helps us to identify individuals. Yeah, yeah, good point. Well it's great isn't it, you know, since, since those early 90s that, you're, that we've got that growing population and that we're finding out so much more about it. Really interesting. Thanks Jim. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to have happening on our doorstep. Kia ora.